Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography and welcome to another quick tip video on Capture One. So today I want to show you a quick tip on how to use the dehaze tool creatively in Capture One. And I want to show you a little trick you can do um, and kind of one of the idiosyncrasies of the dehaze tool in Capture One and how you can take advantage of that to create a kind of cool effect. So. Let me start off and what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the dehaze tool in a negative way. So we're going to use a negative amount. Um, so we're not actually using it to remove haze. In this case, what we're going to try and do is create like a nice kind of soft glow with it. So here I have an image of some lavender with a little bee kind of sitting on the lavender. And what I want to do is kind of create a nice kind of sunshiny type glow on this. So if I drag the dehaze into a negative amount, you can see we're getting a kind of a, a purple haze. So one of the things that Capture One does uh, with its dehaze that's different from everything else is it lets you customize the tone it's using for correcting the shadows when it does its calculations. So that's kind of all very technical, but what it basically means is you can control the look of it with a color picker. So if you select your color picker and just kind of sample around, you can see we can get some quite different results just by picking different colors. So if we, okay, so if I kind of sample down here, some of the kind of the lighter colors, we can get something quite nice. So there we have kind of almost like a wheat kind of color. Um, so, and then we can adjust the amount here with the slider. In and of itself, this is quite an interesting effect, but it might not be exactly what we want to go for. Um, but there's a couple of more things we can do with this trick as well. So I'm gonna reset this, and this time I'm going to add it on a layer, because by adding on a layer, we actually get some more control over it. So I'm gonna go new filled adjustment layer, and this time I'm going to do our negative dehaze again, and we're gonna pick our sample amount again, so again, we can see we're having the same effect. So something like this is probably good, uh, a good starting point. So as you can see, we're fairly flattening the image, which is kind of what we want to do. But if we want to add some of the detail back into this, we can use our Luma range and just bring back in some of the shadows. So uh, I'm just going to do something like this. So just make sure to soften it off because otherwise you'll get some artifacts. So I'm gonna click okay there. So now I can just turn this on and off and you can see that is having quite an effect but we can take this even further. So what I'm gonna do is do some more adjustments to this. So I'm just gonna adjust the brightness a bit maybe. And I'm gonna switch over to the uh, color balance tool and we'll go to three way. I'm just gonna add some more warm tones to it. Maybe some warm tones in the shadow as well. So again, if we just toggle our new layer on and off, you can see that's having quite an effect, but it's probably a little too strong. But again, we can just, because it's on a layer, we can just fade this back a bit. So if I drop this down to around 50%, you can see that's creating quite a nice effect. So it's like we've um, made it look almost like there's more sunshine going on here. Um, and you could, if you wanted to, take this even further by adding a mask to this. So say, for example, if we wanted to have it like almost like a flare, uh, I can add a gradient mask and do something like this. And then all I want to do is just right click on the ma on the adjustment layer and go invert mask. So this way it's on the inside and we can control the softening a bit more. So now we have turned our light effect and made it a bit more directional. So now if I turn this off and on again, you can see there's quite a difference there. And just kind of to finish off the effect, to create almost like a glow as well, we can do some things like add a little negative clarity. Like so, a little negative structure, and it's actually not making a huge effect, but <laughs> neutral. So now if I turn this off and on again, you can see we have created quite a nice kind of soft light effect and we still have quite a degree of control over it. So if, if I turn this up higher now, you can see we're getting even more kind of uh, glow up here because with this turned down quite a bit, you're kind of losing the clarity, doing the negative clarity. And then you can just kind of move your mask around and change the direction. So 
There you have it. There is a quick tip for using negative clarity creatively in Capture One. Um, I hope you have found this useful. If you do, please like, share and subscribe. And thanks for watching. See you in the next video.